Good morning. Here are you again for another lovely session of CENG 325 Structural Analysis. Today will be the 16th lecture of the video series, and today we're going to be looking at virtual work for trusses. So, virtual work for trusses. And uh, I want to start off by gathering a few pieces of, uh, just a few pieces of, of theory, a few pieces, uh, really a few equations from uh, mechanics materials that I'll be using later on. So let's gather up a few miscellanea from mechanics materials, which in our uh, curriculum is 3306. So from 3306, if I just recall the equations of uh, axial stress and strain, I can of course say that axial stress would be a force over area for uniaxial stress, that sort of thing. Strain, by definition, of course, is delta over L, change in length over L, or over the original length, which I'm just going to call delta here. And, of course, uh, sigma equals E over epsilon. So normal stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity divided by the normal strain. Uh, normal strain is equal to the change in length over the original length. And, uh, and uh, basically, I want to relate these. So I do, I do want to develop very briefly or very quickly a load deflection equation that we'll be using later on. So this is a bit of a review for mechanics materials. <coughs> a load deflection relationship for axial members for, or for axial force. Uh, axially loaded members. Well, it's very simple to put all this together. Uh, I know, of course, that sigma equals E epsilon. Uh, sigma equals E uh, epsilon. Oh, wow. E epsilon, not, uh, not a E over epsilon. That'd be a very large number. Uh, so I know that uh, sigma equals E epsilon, which is equal to, if I just substitute in our expression for epsilon here, this is equal to E times delta over L. Uh, so I know that sigma is equal to the modulus of elasticity times the deflection over the length. Uh, and then I also know that F over A, if I can set this term equal to this term here, F over A is equal to sigma, which is then equal to E uh, times delta over L. And uh, if then I eliminate the sigma here, I can say that F over A is equal to E delta uh, over L, or what I really want, and that is that delta is equal to FL over AE. And this is going to be a load deflection relationship that I'm going to use later in the lecture. So what we have here, uh, again, for a uh, axially loaded member such as a truss, a purely axially loaded member, um, if I apply a, if I know the modulus of elasticity uh, here, if I know the cross-sectional area and the length, I can get the change in length just by putting in the force. So I have things that um, I have a way of relating the force to the uh, change in length, and that will prove crucial a core component of the uh, method of virtual work. Okay, so uh, I want, want to move on to describing uh, the principle of virtual work or the principle of work and energy methods for, tri uh, for structures. Okay, so uh, virtual work Let us consider virtual work. So let's think about this for a moment. What happens when I apply force to a member? Let's say I have a member. Now I could look at something very, let's start by looking at something very simple. Let's say I just have a axial loaded member, just maybe a fixed uh, cantilevered thing. And I apply a certain amount of force to this. Say a force P here. What's going to happen to this member? What do you think is going to happen to it? 
Is it just going to stay there and not change at all? What's going to happen to it? It's going to lengthen, yes, obviously. It's, yes, it's, it's going to elongate. Of course. So this is going to elongate. And if I think about this, uh, we, we can look at this from, from the point of view of work. So I do know that this is going to undergo some real uh, deformation delta. A member under load P will, undergo, will uh, experience some deformation delta. Uh, some external deformation delta. And that's fine, but let's consider this from the point of view of energy. Look about, let's consider the work done on the structure. By that, by that external force. Well, um, it's going to be, uh, we have a force moving through a distance. Therefore, we are doing work on the structure. Uh, moving through a distance. Therefore, we are doing work on the structure. So we are imparting energy into the structure. Where does that energy go? Where does that energy go? Into deformation, yes. So all of that energy goes, so basically we have, so all of that energy goes into a, a, essentially elastic strain energy. So all of that is going to go into elastic strain energy. So um, you, if, you, if, if you want to think back to physics class, um, this would be like a spring. If you remember your springs uh, in physics, elementary physics, uh, you have a spring and you can, you can store energy one half kx squared, that sort of thing. Uh, no matter how much you pull it, you're going to be put it, depending on the amount of, uh, of distance you pull it, you're going to be imparting a different amount of, uh, or an increasing amount of energy into the spring. And the same thing for structures. So. Um, the essential idea here is that work external is equal to work internal. The external work is equal to the internal work. Or the work done by external force, uh, external force, equals the work to deform the members. So ultimately what this is, is a form of energy conservation. We're looking we're at this from the point of view of energy conservation. It takes a certain amount of uh, energy to deform a structure, and that is applied as a force over a distance, a force over a distance. Okay, so uh, let us consider, let's, let's first consider external work, see how that uh, relates together, and uh, see if we can somehow simplify the system. Now I want to describe how, uh, first of all, how it might, I want, first I want to describe uh, how it might seem like you could solve this system, uh, but then I want to show you what, that, that the uh, method that's most intuitive actually has some issues with it. Okay, so external work. So again, external work, of course, is the work done by an external force. And I want to look at this from the point of view of trusses.
So if you have your truss here, and let's consider a very simple, say, triangular truss, like this here, pin here, roller here. And uh, let's apply a load P to this. Let us apply a load P here, and then look at what kind of deformations we experience. So let me show the deflected shape of this truss. Well, this joint's going to be over here somewhere, probably uh, both down and to the right, it's going to deform. And it will have a deflected shape, oh, something like this. The roller itself will roll along, and your deflected shape will end up being something like this, both down and to the right. And so your P ends up over here. Mm -hmm. And your primary deflection ends up being in the X direction. So you could have a delta like this. So again, it's undergoing an external de deformation uh, or displacement of delta. So P undergoes a external displacement of delta. So um, what is the problem with this, though? Well, we, or we could say that this is uh, you know, work equals force times distance. But the problem with this, of trying to jump directly to the final deformation, is that uh, we know that uh, the force experienced by members is not constant. So for example, if this is linearly elastic, then the strain, or then the force, that the internal forces, or the, for, the force required to move at a certain distance is linear, uh, increases linearly. Uh, to deform the truss increases linearly. So, if I looked at this, if I were to plot X and F, X and F, um, the force required, and maybe I would have up here, I might have P. Well, I know the force would increase linearly. And this would be that maybe, maybe that final P. And I would have my final deformation delta here. So delta from here to here, and then the work done would be the area under this curve. And it would be triangular, but work here would be one half P delta X, or one half P delta. However, so this is what we would have to do if we wanted to jump directly to the final deformations. We'd have to do an integral of across all of the members, uh, assuming triangular loads, uh, triangular or a linear load uh, uh, for all of them. However, what if load were arbitrarily small? What if I were to apply a unit load to the outside of the structure? What kind of, um, what kind of external work would I have then? Well, if I apply a unit load, a very small load, in that case, the load can be assumed constant. So I would have an X, I would have a, on my F here, I would have a P, um, but that would be just a, uh, a very small uh, P here and delta. So as long as I use a very small load, I can assume a, no, in other words, if I apply a unit load, a, or almost like a differential element, if I apply a unit load to the structure, I can have, I, I can assume uh, effectively constant work or constant force 
a uh, instead of the linear relationship. So, um, but moving on. Okay, so again, uh, if we want to, uh, if we tried to jump directly to the final uh, external work, internal work relationship, we would have a problem because of this linear relationship. But if we could somehow use a unit load, um, if we could somehow use a unit load, then we could use that constant work relationship. But if we're actually trying to just directly apply the actual loads of the structure to the structure and, and then find the actual deformations directly from that, then you'd have this problem of the load uh, not being uh, uh, uniform and then the work not being uh, uniform as well. Okay, so again, uh, it seems like, let me lay out what, it, what I would think that you might be able to do. So it seems you might be able to do the following. If we were to directly apply work, <coughs> uh, apply work energy as follows. We could uh, theoretically calculate the force in each truss member. Uh, find the total work done uh, to deform them by that. Uh, to this. And three, uh, relate this to the work done by the external load. And in certain limited cases, this might work, but generally it won't. Uh, the applied force. So on first blush, if, if, if I just say energy methods, if you start thinking about this, when, or when you first start thinking about this, it, it seems, oh, I could just uh, calculate the you know, and forces in there. From that, I could just apply a one half uh, Fx or one half F delta uh, calculation to each of them, find the work there, and then relate that to the displacement at the uh, application of point P. But this is not necessarily, uh, as, I'll, as I want to show you, there are some problems with this. Uh, there are some problems with this method. So, problem. First of all, the load may not uh, move in a known direction. So, for example, I could have a, a truss like this here. And let, let me compare two different trusses here. Well, the same truss with two different loads on it, two different types of loads. Like this here, and then let me draw the same truss over here. So let us imagine that the P here, in this particular one, it's applied at this joint, and in this particular one, it's applied on this joint. So in this case, let's say P here and P here. In this particular case, here we're good. Um, and the reason we're good is that here, I know uh, let's call this joint A and this joint uh, B here. Uh, I know uh, that all deformation in, at A will be horizontal.
So I know that all deformation at A will be horizontal. That's not going to change. So I know that all deformation at A is going to be horizontal. So uh, when I pull this, I can have a very clear relationship between the, uh, I, I have a very easy way of calculating the external work directly. Because I know that it can't, it's, because it's a roller, it's not going to, to move up and down. It's only going to move right to left. So that means it's very easy to calculate the work done by that force. But what about this one here? This one here, B is going to actually end up moving a, both down and to the right. So I would have a delta Y and a delta X. And it's difficult to predict how much each is going to be in advance. So I'd have a delta Y and a delta X. So here, um, if the load is applied at B, oh, not love, not love load. Um, I was combining load and moves. Uh, load moves some delta Y and delta X and delta Y cannot immediately um, know how much or ratio between them. Uh, is each. So again, this is, I, I'm, I, again, as a reminder, what I'm discussing here is why it's very difficult to directly apply work energy to a global structure. Uh, other problems. There's a few. Uh, let's see. Uh, it doesn't work if the load, if I'm asking for the displacement at a location other than where load is applied. Or I should say, this only works if I want to know the displacement at the location the joint is applied to. At location the load is applied to. So if I want to know the deformation at this joint here, that's great. Um, I can just apply the external virtual work and my P. The distance that this load P moves is going to be the exact same uh, displacement as joint A. So that's not a problem. That, that works just fine. But what if I want to know the deformation at this joint here? What if that's what I'm interested in? Well, then I'm kind of out of luck. So I can't use that direct application of work and energy um, to solve for that joint there. Uh, also, um, it's not, it's only useful in limited cases, cannot be used for uh, some things like thermal expansion, or cannot be used for uh, non-load driven, uh, load driven expansion or stress, such as thermal expansion. What I would really like is I would like a method that would be able to work with many different types of loads, many different types of um, structural systems, many different types of deformations. I want something that is more universal. And uh, also this method here, the direct method, uh, also doesn't work with statically indeterminate. We'll also have trouble with statically indeterminate structures. indeterminate structures. All right, so what do we do instead? Well, we use virtual work. Instead of using real work, we use virtual work. So we already had external work and internal work, but now we're going to add virtual work, virtual work and uh, real work. So virtual work to the rescue, virtual work. And when I say virtual, I, uh, I'm simply referring to imaginary work, for, uh, work that is 
um, from non. Uh, now I, I want to. I have to be very careful when I use the word imaginary. I'm not talking square root of negative one here. We're not talking mathematically imaginary. We're talking about um, uh, work from loads other than the loads that are actually applied to the structure. Is a uh, virtual work disjoint specific, like you can only analyze one joint at a time? Or? Um, okay. The question is: Is virtual work joint specific? Now. Uh, what I'm going to teach you today is, is uh, formulated for uh, trusses. So we're going to be looking at for the work uh, done to displace joints and that sort of thing. So yes. But as we'll see later on, we'll also look at virtual work for beams. And we'll see that it works for beams, for frames. It can work for almost any type of structure. Well, at least any type of simple structure. OK. So virtual work to the rescue. Um, now. So the central principle of virtual work So basically we will define a virtual or, imagine, uh, or imaginary system uh, with unit displacements and loads. Uh, define a virtual or imaginary uh, system uh, with unit displacements and units loads. And uh, I have a very uh, long uh, way of describing this, or I want to illustrate the formal principle, and it's a bit of a doozy to write out, but uh, I think I can, I think we can manage. So uh, here is the formal uh, explanation of uh, virtual work in word form. If a deformable body, so in long uh, form explanation, this is what virtual work is. If a, if a deformable body is in equilibrium, uh, under a, a virtual system of forces and couples, uh, under a virtual system uh, of forces, uh, and it is subject to a small, uh, any small uh, real deformation, any small uh, real deformation uh, consistent with the structure, uh, with the structure Uh, the support and continuity conditions of the structure, or the structure's support and uh, support conditions and continuity. In other words, we're not sending members flying through each other. Uh, then, then the virtual external work. Uh, or then the virtual, sorry, then the virtual, yeah, then the virtual external work uh, done by the virtual external forces acting through the real deformation delta. Uh, acting through the real external deformations uh, external deformations uh, is equal to the real 
or sorry, the uh, is equal to the uh, virtual internal work. Told you it was a doozy. Uh, virtual internal work uh, done by the virtual internal for by the virtual the virtual internal work done um, by the virtual internal forces. Uh, virtual internal forces acting uh, through uh, virtual internal forces acting through the real internal displacements. So simple, right? All in one sentence. Method of virtual work in one simple sentence. Yeah, yes, that is definitely an English teacher's nightmare. One giant run on sentence. Uh, okay. So uh, now that's all well and good, but I'd probably rather see this in more of a uh, mathematical form or at least something with a, an equation uh, on it of some sort. So let me parse this in a bit more, uh, uh, let me rewrite this in a bit more parsable format. So in other words, the virtual internal, uh, virtual external force. So if I sum up the virtual external forces uh, times the real external displacement, let me just write that down below. Uh, real external displacement the virtual external work uh, sorry the virtual external force uh, times the real external displacement is going to be equal to the summation of uh, the virtual external force or sorry the virtual internal forces virtual internal force Uh, times real internal displacement. <laughs> times the real in, uh, internal displacement. So we're going to have, uh, basically this is a way of saying, okay, the work done on the outside is equal to the work done on the inside, and uh, so we're going to have a, basically we're going to apply a unit load on the joint we're interested at, or at the location we're interested in, and then um, we'll have that virtual force and the work done by that times the, basically the work uh, produced by that force moving by, through the real deformation is going to be equal to the virtual internal forces times their internal deformations. Okay, and so what we see here is we have a relationship between a virtual system and a real system. So we have our virtual system here in the loads, a virtual system. And then in turn, we have a real system. And in turn, we have the real system. Okay, so I'm gonna work through an example of this. Uh, I wanna work through an example demonstrating the basic principles of uh, virtual work. Not necessarily looking at a large um, uh, truss yet, but I wanna, I want to illustrate the, the principle of virtual work, um, really demonstrating what all this really means, of this internal, external, virtual, real. Um, I wanna really work through a brief example to show what this means. Okay. So demonstration, and this demonstration came from Casamali's third edition, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So demonstration, or the principle of virtual work demonstration.
So let us consider a very simple frame. And this frame would be a truss, but uh, that's fine. So consider a simple frame. And it's going to be like this. It's going to have two pins here and here. A pin here and a pin here. Then I'm going to have I'm going to call this point A, uh, point B and point C over here. All pin joints connected by straight members. Or as straight as I can manage to draw. And then uh, I'm going to show the angles of these. Uh, the angle above for uh, member AC, I'm going to call this one theta 1. This one's going to be theta 1, and the angle above, this is going to be theta 2. So I have theta 1 and theta 2. And apply to this. Now, I'm going to apply a virtual load to this. I'm going to apply a virtual load to this. Uh, no, yes, exactly. A and B are not connected. So I'm going to apply a virtual load to this. PV is a virtual load. A virtual load, basically a unit load, a small load. Um, so we're applying a small load to this. And so this would not be the actual load that was on the structure. This is um, basically, I would be interested in finding the deformation at point C, so I'm going to apply a virtual load um, to joint C. So if I do a free body diagram of joint C, so consider the free body diagram of joint C. Let us look at what kind of uh, forces are produced. So we have this external virtual force, and that's going to be PV. So I have an external virtual force. Again, I must uh, reiterate, this is not the real loads that would be on this structure. Maybe there's a downward load, maybe there's a rightward load, maybe there's an upward load. It doesn't matter. Um, this is just the virtual load that we're applying for the sake of finding deformations. So uh, then uh, what would be produced internally, I would have some sort of uh, FVBC, a virtual load, a virtual force, I should say, in member BC, and maybe FV uh, AC. FV AC, and the same theta 1 and theta 2. Uh, theta 1 and theta 2. So as a reminder or as a review, what I have here is I have my, my virtual load applied to the outside of the structure, and this produces two virtual internal loads. So we have, uh, or, uh, we have external loads and internal <laughs> forces or internal loads. Or, uh, I probably should say internal forces. So I, have a, I apply a virtual uh, load to the outside of the structure, and then I say, okay, what kind of internal forces are generated by that uh, virtual uh, load? So then I can apply a balance of forces. Let me briefly apply a balance of forces. Let us say the summation of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. And that's going to be PV minus FAVC uh, or FVAC, the virtual force in member AC, uh, times cosine theta 1. Again, this is just basic equilibrium, basic statics, minus FVBC times cosine theta 2, or sorry, FVBC times the cosine of theta 2. And this equals 0. And then the summation of forces in the y direction will be equal to 0. And this will be equal to negative uh, F. VAC times the sine of theta 1 uh, plus FVBC times the sine of theta 2. And this equals 0. 
And so this would be my these would be my equations of equilibrium. And I'll especially note this one here, because I'll need this one later in the derivation. I'm going to just call this component here. Um, this will be uh, maybe 1, where this is equal to 0 here. Maybe include the 0, yes. OK, so we might need that later. So we have our virtual uh, force, and we've seen what kind of virtual, uh, virtual uh, We've applied a virtual load, and we've seen what kind of uh, internal virtual forces are created by that external virtual load. Now, I want to apply a deformation of delta. I want to apply a deformation of delta. Uh, now I'll apply, I think I'll do that maybe on the next slide. I want to apply a deformation of delta to the system. Apply a deformation of delta. So we have this truss again, and I want to look at how it's going to deform. So we have joints A, B, and C. Uh, here. and C. No change there. And the loads aren't going to change here. I'm still going to have my theta 1, theta 2. Still have my theta 1 and theta 2. And my load P here. But now I'm going to force this thing to move through an external deformation delta. And this delta would be whatever deformation the uh, actual real loads produce in the structure. So I'm going to say this is going to undergo a deformation delta. Deformation delta. And then my deform shape would end up looking something like this. This would all end up being stretched out a bit. <coughs> and so that would be my delta. And again, this is my PV here, not just my P. So I should probably put a V there to indicate this is a virtual force. So what I need to do, though, is I need to find the change in length of the members. Because finding the external work done by this is going to be very simple. It's just delta times p, just uh, force times distance. But uh, the members are the, are the tricky part, because we need to find the change in length of the members in order to, uh, need to find the change in length of the members in order to uh, find the internal uh, virtual work uh, done by uh, the, this force. So we need to find the change in length of members. So I'm going to make an assumption, and that is the small deformation assumption. So we will assume small deformation, as we often do here. And in particular, what this means is, um, when we assume small deformations, uh, thus uh, theta 1 and theta 2 remain unchanged or they are not substantially changed. Uh, are not substantially changed. So I know when I actually do pull on this, theta 1 and theta 2, if I, if I pull this a large distance, theta 1 and theta 2 have to uh, change an angle. Although, uh, but if we assume a small enough deformation, I can basically treat the initial thetas as the final thetas. And the reason I'm going to do that is, well, I'm going to show you right here. It makes calculating the deformations uh, much simpler. So I have here, let us look at this from sort of a point of view of a 
parallelogram, or just a little, let's look at the trigonometry here. So I have my joint here, and it's going to be under load um, PV. And then I'm going to have this force here, uh, FVAC. And then I'm going to have this here along this line. Uh, actually, let me make, make that a bit, these a bit shallower because I'm going to need to draw a diagram from these. Uh, FVAC. And then this one here, uh, FVBC. Same as we had before. FVBC and FVAC. And the same theta 1, theta 2. Uh, theta 1 and theta 2. Now, uh, looking at the, uh, looking at their lines of action uh, here, or actually I should say, let us look at the deformation. This is going to deform to some final distance, delta. PV is going to end up moving here, and we're going to have a deformation delta. PV, PV moves along here, and we have deformation delta. But what I need to then do is I want to find the change in length of each of the members, and I can do that via just projecting uh, the vectors onto each other. So if I project this one up <coughs> and down like that at a right angle, and same here. This also at a right angle. Uh, if Again, as long as theta 1 and theta 2 are going to remain unchanged, if this is theta 1 and this is theta 2, then that means the deformations that these things are going to experience, um, this member is going to experience delta times the cosine of theta 1, and this one will experience delta times the cosine of theta 2. So this is just allowing me to transform the. Uh, this is just allowing me to transform uh, the deformation in the x direction to deformations along the axes of the two members, and again, I'm doing. I'm able to do this uh, purely because I'm assuming small angle deformation. Otherwise, you, I mean, it, the most intuitive way to do this is to try to do like a distance formula thing. You you might say, okay, um, you could, for example, if you didn't want to do that, you could say, okay, well. Um, let's treat this as we're moving this over here, and then we have the, new, the old coordinates and the new coordinates and find the change in length by the distance formula, square root of delta x squared over delta y squared, that sort of thing. But you'll find that that becomes complex very really quickly, and uh, the math becomes uh, a little bit more uh, complex. And we can uh, simplify things via uh, assuming small angle deformations. Or in other words, another way of saying this, is that uh, member AC, uh, AC will increase in length uh, by delta cosine theta 1, and member uh, BC uh, increase in length by delta cosine theta 2, by delta cosine theta 1 and delta cosine theta 2. So now I want to take this knowledge and apply this uh, for work and energy. I want to analyze this in terms of work and energy. Now analyze the work. I hope you came prepared to work hard in class today. Oh, get it? Work. Best jokes in this class. Okay, uh, now analyze the work. Now, going back to this, uh, in terms of internal work, only joint C is going to be important. 
In terms of the uh, internal work, only joint C is going to be important. And the reason for that is that joint B and joint A don't move. Joint B and joint A don't move. And in order to have work, it is not sufficient to only have force. Yes, there are forces at joint A and joint B, but there's no deformation. And so uh, the only things that matter for work are where you have deformation. And so, again, only joint C is important. Uh, as uh, A and B uh, do not move, do not deform, or do not displace, I should probably say. Do not displace. So um, let us look at the virtual work. The virtual work here. And I'm going to use a physics defi definition of work, and that's just force times distance. So. PV times delta. What is this? This is the work done by this force. It's moving uh, a distance of delta and its value is P. Then minus FV uh, AC, the virtual force in member AC, times its displacement of delta cosine theta 1. If you remember way back to physics class, you'll remember, of course, that work that, uh, that, that, that forces that are acting in the direction opposite the displacement do negative work on objects. So if you're, you know, dragging a block along the ground, like the classic physics problem, the high school physics problem, if you're dragging a great big block around, along the ground and you're moving at constant velocity, well, your pulling force is doing positive work while friction is doing negative work. Again, where this negative comes from, it's negative because that force is acting opposite the direction of motion. So. We're basically dredging up topics from high school physics. So, or we could look at the integral relationships as well, but yes? Doesn't AC increase by delta cosine theta cubed? Or uh, is that down? Yeah, there's another one. Um, AC, delta cosine theta 1. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what I had. Okay. okay. So and then, the, yes, I have the other one. Yes. Um, then minus FVBC times delta cosine theta 2 delta cosine theta 2. And so again, the uh, actual applied force is doing positive work here through deformation delta, and then the two uh, internal forces, and again, these are both virtual, the two uh, virtual internal uh, forces are going to do, are going to act their own distances here. Okay, and so uh, now I want to factor this. I'm going to factor out the delta, and I will have uh, PV uh, minus uh, FVAC uh, cosine of theta 1 minus FVBC uh, FVBC times cosine of theta 2 and all of this times delta and then um, all this times delta and this equals the virtual work. Now uh, what else, though? Ah, but take a look at this. Remember this here, how I said we're going to save this? PV minus, oh, that looks familiar. That's exactly what we have. It's almost like it's a derivation. Um, so all of this here must equal zero. So all of this here is equal to zero. So therefore, again, this is via that equation one from earlier all this is equal to zero, therefore the total uh, virtual work is zero. If this is zero, then virtual work is zero. The total virtual work is zero. Or I could write this, and, and because of that, I can separate this out if I want, and say uh, I can just put in zero for virtual work and say that zero equals um, PV uh, PV minus uh, FVAC times uh, delta cosine theta 1 uh, here uh, minus uh, actually, let me put the deltas out here for now, sorry. 
missing my delta, FBAC times cosine of theta 1 minus FVBC times the cosine of theta 2 times delta. Or splitting this up, I can say that PV times delta is equal to FVAC Uh, FBAC times delta cosine theta 1 uh, plus FVBC times delta cosine theta 2. And this may not look at, like much, but this is actually a very, this is basically my final form here. But I want to interpret what this means. So, What I have here, effectively, is on this side of the equation, um, on this left side of the equation, I have a virtual external work, a virtual external work uh, done, um, or I should say virtual external work by virtual force acting through real external displacement by the virtual uh, external force through a real uh, external displacement. A real external displacement. So I have a virtual external work done by a virtual external force acting through a real external displacement. And then on this side of the equation, I have a virtual internal work, or I have the virtual internal work uh, done by a virtual internal force or by a by the virtual internal forces, I should probably say by the virtual by the virtual, not a virtual by the virtual internal forces acting uh, through real internal displacements. And this is, the, is, is a very good basic uh, uh, explanation or example of applying virtual work through real internal displacements. So again, we look at both the uh, uh, external and internal on both the uh, real and the virtual. Or, I could, uh, finally, I could say this is, or finally, or, or simply, the work virtual internal is equal to the work virtual external. So work virtual external or uh, internal, I got my external and internal mixed up here. The virtual work external equals the virtual work internal. Uh, virtual external equals the virtual work internal. Okay, so uh, now if I wanna look at this in a different way, though. Um, but what if I, or what, let's look at this in a more general condition. If I want to look at this mathematically, I could, another way of saying this, I could call it the summation of um, the virtual forces external times their deltas, their external deltas, uh, is equal to the summation of F, the virtual force internal, times a lowercase delta for internal displacements. So, uh, FVE is your external is an external virtual force and FVI is an internal virtual force uh, Delta capital Delta is the real external displacements 
or the real external displacement at that joint that you're really interested in. Real external displacement. And lowercase delta is the real internal displacement. So we have all of this, and now I want to show how we go and uh, apply this to trusses. I want to see how to apply this for trusses. So we looked at the very principle of virtual work, and now I want to see how we apply this to trusses. All right, now let's apply this to trusses. So now for trusses. So let's apply the principle of virtual work to trusses. So remember how I mentioned before that delta equals FL over AE for longitudinal um, tension or longitudinal force? Well, delta equals FL over AE, as we saw previously, just a review for mechanics and materials. And so we're going to use this to generate our internal uh, forces for our, uh, from our virtual forces. Okay, so uh, in general, here's the idea. Uh, if we want to know the vertical deflection, uh, if we want to know the vertical deflection at a joint, we're going to apply a unit vertical load to that joint. Uh, if we want to know the vertical deflection on a joint, we apply a unit uh, vertical deflection on that joint. A load on that joint. And same thing if it's horizontal, if we're, or if we're interested in the horizontal deflection. So um, if we want the horizontal deflection on uh, of the joint, uh, sorry, if we want the a horizontal deflection of a joint on a truss, we apply a, a unit horizontal load onto that joint. So in other words, if we have a truss like this, for example, if I have a truss and I'm interested in the horizontal displacement of this thing, uh, delta x here, my virtual load is going to be a unit horizontal load. So in other words, uh, for a simple truss like this, it would be a unit horizontal load uh, like this. We, I would apply, when I say unit, I mean of magnitude 1. So I'd be applying a 1 pound or a 1 kip or whatever it is your unit system is. So if I was using KSI and a length in inches, that sort of thing, I'd apply a one kip load uh, to my um, uh, to my joint here. So again, for this particular for this particular setup, I would just happen to be interested in the horizontal deflection at this joint, and if that's what I'm interested in, then I just apply a unit horizontal load um, to that joint, and that becomes my virtual uh, load, and then I can, that becomes my virtual external load, then I can use that to find all of my virtual internal loads, and then I can relate that to uh, what we've seen previously. So we'll, we'll see again that we can use uh, the work virtual external is equal to the work virtual internal. So we know again that the work, vir the virtual external work is going to be equal to the um, virtual internal work. And, well, what does this equal? Well, uh, the summation of, of F external uh, de times delta, um, time, again, times delta is equal to the summation of uh, F VI uh, delta. Now, here's the interesting thing. Uh, where do we get our delta? Uh, so. Again, as a review, let's review this, what these things are. These, again, this will be my, uh, this is the, the for, this will be the force, uh, the virtual unit force, the unit virtual force, uh, unit exter virtual external force. Uh, virtual force. 
and this delta is going to be the uh, real deformation, real joint deformation or deflection or displacement. And this here, uh, this is going to be the uh, loads, the internal forces, the virtual internal force is produced by the unit force. So my virtual internal forces. And this delta, this is the real internal displacements. Uh, real internal displacements. And how do I get that? Well, it just so happens that we have this. We have delta equals FL over AE. And as long as the truss is statically determinant, we can find the forces in the truss very easily. And so uh, we just use the real loads to get, the, uh, to get our delta for our real delta. And uh, that's where we can find the change in length fairly easily. And so uh, putting in our known quantities now, well, not necessarily known quantities, but um, putting simplifying this formula. So again, we started with this summation of, I want to rewrite this here, summation of uh, F, uh, F external. Right? Did I write that as an L? That should be more of an E. Uh, FVE, uh, the summation of the virtual external forces times the uh, real external displacement will be equal to the summation of the uh, virtual internal forces times the real internal displacements. And again, FVE uh, is just going to equal 1, and we're, we're not, we're not going to have a summation, we're just going to have a, a single one because we're applying just a single unit load to one joint. And our delta here, uh, our delta here is going to be equal to uh, FV over AE. And so we now have a uh, now we now have our final equation for applying the method of virtual uh, work to trusses. So one times delta. Let me write this a little bigger. One times delta is going to equal then the summation of FVI times FL over AE times FL over AE. And again, so this is going to be our virtual external force. Our delta is the real uh, uh, joint displacement. That ultimately, that's what we're looking for here. And the summation, this is the summation of the virtual internal forces times FL over AE, the real internal displacements, or the length change for each member. So um, let me uh, summarize the method that we're going to use using this equation. The procedure for trusses. We're going to work with both the real system and the virtual system. Uh, for trusses here, so first of all, we're going to work with the uh, external system, or sorry, the real system, one real system. So for the real system, we're going to compute the real member forces in all members caused by real external loads. Uh, compute the real member forces in all members uh, caused by the real external loads. Two, um, with the uh, virtual system. Uh, so with the virtual system, we're going to apply a unit virtual load in the direction on the joint, or I should just maybe say it like this, on the joint where we want to know the displacement, uh, where we wish to know the displacement. the displacement, that's a really bad C, we wish to know the displacement, apply a unit virtual load
in the direction where we want to know the displacement. Oh, uh, we wish to know the displacement. Uh, the displacement. So again, on a particular joint, if we're interested in what is the displacement to the right, we're going to apply a, again, using assuming we are using kips and kips per square inch and uh, that sort of thing, um, we just use a unit for whatever uh, unit system we're using. But uh, for example, K for, if we're using KSI, kips per square inch, if member lengths are in inches, then our unit load will be one kip. And that would be, uh, if we're interested in the horizontal displacement, we'll apply a, a horizontal unit load. If we're interested in the vertical displacement, then we'll apply a vertical unit load. And then three are also here. And once we've done this, uh, calculate the uh, internal force, uh, internal virtual force for all members. Uh, the internal virtual force uh, FVI uh, for all members. And then, uh, once you have that, three, apply the equation. Apply the equation we've seen previously. And this is going to again equal one times delta is equal to the summation of FBI uh, times FL over AE. FL over AE. And again, note this is a summation. Uh, so note this is a summation. Maybe I don't need to put a point to that. Note this is a summation, because, and then the reason we're able to sum them up again because this is energy, and with energy it doesn't ma uh, with work and energy methods, um, where their energy of course is not a vector; it's a scalar. So you can just sum up the energy expressions even though things are bending and twist uh, and deforming in different directions. Uh, so note again, this is a ta this is a, a summation, and so this means this is going to be very conducive to tabular forms of calculation therefore conducive to tabular form. Uh, to tabular form. What I mean by this is that if you are doing this, uh, you're probably going to want to create a table that has like, uh, for example, you're, you, you might want to apply a, you might you would create a table that has like member, uh, member number, like one, two, three, and then maybe something like, um, the, the length of the members, and then the area of the members, and then the, uh, let's see, and you're probably, well, you're gonna have probably, you'll probably have the same E unless it was different materials, that sort of thing. Uh, what else would you want? Uh, modulus elasticity. Oh, of course, the, uh, forces, the, uh, real external forces. You'd calculate the real external forces, and then you'd have, sorry, the real internal forces, and then the virtual internal forces. And then you would calculate a uh, FL over AE for each of these. And then based upon that, you just, you just go down the row and then just sum things up. Uh, and you'd probably also want to have an FVI times FL over AE. And then you do a summation on all of these. And that's what would appear on the right hand side of your equation. And we will go through that in another lesson, uh, showing how to work through this in an example. Also, one final note on this, on the theory of virtual work for trusses, is that uh, at first it might seem, well, what is the use of this? Well, uh, or in other words, um, why would I want to know this? Or, or it, it doesn't seem limited that if you have to do this entire thing for a single joint displacement, isn't that a lot of work for just one joint displacement in just, in, in just a single direction? And the truth is, yes, it is a lot of work. But um, often, well, two notes on this. Um, so yes, uh, this will give you, this is a lot of work, uh, is it, this is a lot, if I can get my page back, uh, a lot of work for the displacement in one direction, uh, in one direction on a single joint. 
of a single joint. However, that's okay. And the reason for this is often you'll be able to get far more uh, information than you would think out of just a single joint displacement. So especially in systems that are not statically determinant, um, if systems are not statically determinant, uh, are not statically determinant, uh, are not statically determinant, Uh, a single joint displacement can be very useful. Uh, can help to solve for many other uh, displacements and forces. Many other displacements and forces. All right, so that can help solve for many other displacements and forces. So, and I will do a follow-up video where I go and demonstrate uh, how to do this uh, through a long form worked out example. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, hope you all enjoyed this video and as always, thank you.